Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So Blizzard's been a little bit slow announcing cards. We still don't know the reveal schedule for the remaining cards in the set, but I do have six new ones to talk about today, including a new Shaman card which has just been announced. It's the Plague card, so let's take a look at it right now. It's called Plague of the Murlocs. It's a three mana epic spell, and it transforms all minions into random Murlocs. So I'm gonna look at this card in two different parts because I think it's a very interesting card, and I think it can be a very good card too. So the first place to look at is, is it good in Murloc Shaman? Well, Murloc Shaman right now is pretty decent. I honestly don't see this card being great in that deck, um, just because a lot of Murlocs have battle cries. All this would do is, if you put Murlocs onto the board, all this does is transform them into other ones. Now, usually that kind of effect is great if you can make a few trades, damage your own minions, then transform them into new minions. But Murlocs don't have a lot of health, so that's quite difficult to do. Often when you're making trades, you would they would die, and often you don't want to be making trades, you want to be going face with Murloc Shaman. So it's not often going to be great in that respect. But this card does transform enemy minions into Murlocs as well. So in a Murloc deck, it could be very good to try and get rid of enemy taunts. Anything that's big and getting in your way, this could be a good way to do it. But Toxfin is a card that Murloc got in the pre previous expansion, and I think that is a much better, better way to deal with big taunts. Now where I could see it work in a Murloc deck is potentially, it, it looks like they're kind of pushing lackeys onto Shaman for this expansion. So maybe a lackey Murloc deck combination could go together because if you're playing lots of 1-1 lackeys onto the board, transforming them into Murlocs is very good for you. So that could be an instance where this would work. There are some, uh, there is one charge Murloc, the, Murloc, um, the Bluegill Warrior. That's not really going to be worth it. Sometimes you might need two damage to win the game. So you play all your Murlocs into face. They've got two um, health left. You play this and get the Bluegill Warrior. But uh, that's a bit of an unlikely scenario. I think it's most likely going to be in a, a deck that wants to transform lackeys. You could also use it with the Thunderhead, where you play Thunderhead, overload a little bit, get some 1-1s one and transform into Murlocs. But usually with Thunderhead, because they've got Rush, what you're wanting to do with the Sparks is trade them in anyway. So I don't know. I don't really see it happening too much there. But where I think this spell is going to be pretty decent is it's almost a board clear um, because it gets rid of death rattles. It transforms your opponent's minions into murlocs. And murlocs have very low health usually. So you could follow this up with a lightning storm. So you play this, all your enemy minions become murlocs. Then you play lightning storm and you should clear most of that board. It's very good to get rid of death rattles on your opponent's side, big taunts, and I have a suspicion that this expansion will include a lot of death rattles. Um, we've seen this, which can deal with it. We've also seen the priest spell, the priest plague, which silences and destroys all minions on the board. That seems aimed at death rattles. Earthquake seems aimed at death rattles as well because it deals five damage, then two afterwards. So I feel like Plague of the Murlocs could be a good. Not necessarily one you'd put into a control shaman deck, but one that generates randomly could be really good at certain instances. Um, let's just say Nazoth was in the game again, because I, I, I feel like they're leading up to a big card like Nazoth that does something with Death Rattles. When they play that card, they get a big board, you just play this, and go back to square one, and their Murlocs are easily removed. So I could see that being quite good. Um, and also, They've, there's another card I'll show later for Priest, which is pushing it towards Resurrect Priest. This card is brilliant against Resurrect Priest, so if that ever becomes a top tier deck, Shaman's just put this in there. Because when it transforms enemy minions into a Murloc, not only do they not get the death of that minion they're trying to kill, but it gets a random Murloc put into their deck as well, into their Resurrect pool. So it's very bad for Resurrect Priest. So a pretty cool Shaman card, I think. Shaman's got some decent cards so far, actually, in this expansion, so I'm expecting them to be a pretty good class in the following meta. Now let's look at that Priest card that I alluded to earlier. This is called Psychopomp. It's an epic card. It's four mana, three attack, one health, and it has the battle cry, summon a random friendly minion that died this game and give it reborn. Now, if you don't know what reborn is, that's a new mechanic, and what it does is if a minion has reborn, when it dies, it comes back with one health, as the same minion, just with one health. So this is a very strong card, in my opinion. Psychopomp goes into a Resurrect deck. Um, mass Resurrection's in the game at the moment, but they can't play it. Priests can't play it until turn 9. So that's where that deck really struggled. However, with this card, 
it gives them some of those resurrect mechanics that they can play before the late game. Now there is a downside, the downside being that Psychopomp goes into your resurrect port and it's a battle cry. So if you bring this back if you with mass resurrection it's pretty useless. But if you can make a minion die early that you want to get rid of, let's say you get rid of Archmage Vargath for example, then you play Psychopomp, you're going to get another Vargath and then it, the Vargath will have reborn so it's going to when it dies it comes back with one health. So it's really really good and that means that after that period you've got three Vargaths in your resurrect pool then you play mass resurrection you get a bunch of um, Vargaths on the board you know that's just one example there'll be other death rattles which go really well with this other early game minions like Cairn Bloodhawk for example would be fantastic with this card so it's it's very positive I think um, if you look at the stats of it four mana three one is killed pretty easily but not traded into very easily because it's got three attack let's just say all you did was summon a one one with reborn that's already a four mana five attack three health minion so you can see what I'm getting at here this is very good stat value with the only drawback being that it can be resummoned itself which is not something you want to do so I think Resurrect Priest could go pretty far with this. They do need some other cards that they want to resurrect, but I think it could be really good. Next, let's take a look at some Paladin cards, and there's three which kind of all fit together, none of which are very exciting to me, but I'll explain as I go through. This one is a one mana, two attack, one health minion, rare called Brazen Zealot. Whenever you summon a minion, gain plus one attack. So it's kind of like a snowbally minion that you want to play on turn one, get exactly the right draws in your hand, keep snowballing and kill your opponent. Mana Worm is a good example of that, of ways that you could just buff it out of control. But this one, it's only got one health. And the problem with it only having one health is that I think it can be very easily countered. Um, hero power such as the Mage Hero Power, dead. Rogue Hero Power, dead. Paladin could just use their Hero Power and trade it in. So it's unlikely to stick around very, very long, which is a good thing in my opinion, I think. Um, I don't like these play a, turn one, play a card on turn one and win the game. I don't really like those cards so much. So maybe this will have some uses because the effect is very powerful. Um, gaining one attack, it can be really good. I just think it's very easy for your opponent to deal with. Now it is supplemented with this next card called Sand Wasp Queen. Two mana, three attack, one health beast. And it has the battle cry of add two two one sand wasps to your hand which are one mana cards that you can play on the board as well so that's a very strong battle cry the stats on this are pretty decent you're sacrificing maybe one health to have this pretty decent battle cry of more small minions it's also kind of geared towards buffing your hand because it puts more minions in your hand that you could buff there aren't too many good ways to do that right now in paladin um, so hopefully we'll see some more hand buff cards to go with it but again this card is kind of okay um it's very easy for your opponent to deal with on turn two but it does give you some more fuel to keep playing cards then the final card of this kind of set of three is salhet's pride a rare card with three and um, three mana cost three attack one health and it has a strong death rattle to be fair of draw two one health minions from your deck so when any sort of card draw in hearthstone is good drawing two on a on a body of a minion is very strong Drawing one health minions isn't great, but maybe this deck's kind of targeted towards that, um, so it could be pretty good. In Hearthstone, if you can have any kind of death rattle or, or any draw, sorry, which targets specific cards, it can be very strong. So if there are some really powerful one health cards, then this can be very good to put them in your hand. Now, you'll notice all of these cards have one health. So I think, what I think is probably this will have something to do with the Paladin quest. Maybe you'll have to summon one health minions. And when you complete the quest, maybe you summon five or six one health minions. Then your quest is to give your minions divine shield or something. Because these minions do have very high attack for their stats. So although they're very easy for your opponent to kill, if they're trading, they'll most likely kill whatever your opponent trades in with. So that is kind of to their advantage. And if you can put Divine Shield on these, then it's very strong. Um, also, Never Surrender is the Paladin Secret, which could buff these. Um, that's the one where if your opponent casts a spell, give your minions plus two health. That could leave you in a very strong board position. But to be honest, your opponent's going to know you're playing that kind of card if you're playing these. So they'll hopefully try and play around it. Are these cards very exciting uh, to me? No. Um, they're very easily countered by Wild Pyromancer any type of AoE. So unless we see some other cards which can really um, 
support this or the quest is really strong. I don't really see these being played at all. This one, Salhex Pride, could be played if there's a particular one health minion you want to be pulling out of your deck. Probably not one we've seen yet, but there's a lot of cards that have come in the expansion. So, yeah, not a very exciting direction for me. Paladin, but we haven't seen everything yet, so I could be wrong. Finally, let's take a look at a rogue card. Now, this is very interesting, and one I also don't think is very good, but it's a, a one-mana card called Plague of Madness. Each player equips a 2-2 knife with Poisonous. So one mana to get a 2-2 knife with Poisonous is very good. Um, rogue does like to use weapon trades. Um, they usually like to kill with their minions and protect them with their face and just kind of balance their health because there isn't a lot of healing in Rogue. Um, only through neutral minions can you really do that. This, however, gives it one to your opponent. And what your opponent wants to be doing against Rogue, particularly controlled decks, is just killing their minions, which is what you can do with a 2-2 knife. Now, obviously, this is, works exactly the same as Weapons Project in Warrior, and you can use it to destroy your opponent's weapons. So if there's some p powerful weapons, you can just replace it with a 2-2 knife with Poisonous. And, you know, that's a very strong effect, but I think it works so much better in Warrior because they could make use of the Weapons Project so much better than your opponent could because you could kill their weapon that they want to use, give them a weapon which is all right, but... You could then play Harrison Jones and draw some cards. The armor that you get you synergizes with your other cards, such as Shield Slam. This, however, I don't really see being very good. If you play it on turn one, um, it means you're not playing a minion on turn one, and it just gives your opponent a, an efficient way to deal with your two and three drops. If you're playing it later in the game to get rid of your opponent's weapon, you're still giving them a pretty powerful weapon. The opposite to that, though, is that Lackey Road, for example... If you're playing a bunch of lackeys, it doesn't matter if your opponent wants to kill this with a with a poisonous knife. So, not a very good card for me, but it could have some interesting options. All right, guys, well, that's all the cards we've got to look at today. Some interesting ones in there, some not so interesting ones, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the cards. What do you think this Paladin quest is going to be? Do you think it'll be Divine Shields? Do you think it'll be giving your minions extra health? I think it will have something to do with Divine Shield. Um... I think, because that would be quite powerful on one health minions. But we'll see. We'll see. That's one of the exciting things is kind of trying to guess what's going to happen. So thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.